Hello, and thank you for watching this video on AWS hosting options for .NET desktop applications. My name is Carlos Santos, and I'm a Microsoft Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. We will start off with an overview of which services you can use to host your desktop applications, then look at some use cases, and finish off with a walkthrough on how to host a .NET application using these services. You can use two solutions from our end user computing suite of services to host your .NET desktop applications, Amazon Workspaces and Amazon AppStream 2. Customers are choosing AWS end user computing services because they give you the agility to respond to the changing needs of your global workforce by being fully managed, pay as you go, reliable and secure. Let's take a closer look at these services. Amazon Workspaces is a managed, secure desktop as a service solution that lets users access a full desktop on demand with persistent sessions. With Workspaces, you can create a custom image and custom bundle to provide users with a persistent desktop experience with your .NET application pre-installed. While you may be able to create your own virtual desktop infrastructure using Windows EC2 instances, Workspaces takes care of the undifferentiated heavy lifting, giving you time to focus on more value-adding activities. If you do not need a persistent desktop experience, Amazon AppStream 2 is a fully managed, non-persistent application streaming service that lets users access distinct applications on demand. You centrally manage your desktop applications on AppStream 2 and securely deliver them to any computer. Users get individual virtual machines with AppStream 2, which are replaced after each session and never share a virtual machine with other users. This means that performance is never affected by other users. With both of these services, apps and data are co-located in AWS and only encrypted pixels are streamed across the wire. Users experience a high quality, low latency visualization experience. Workspaces provides native clients for various operating systems as well as a web client. AppStream users can access the applications either by using an HTML5 browser or a Windows client application. All workspaces will be joined to an Active Directory domain. AppStream 2 fleets can be domain joined or standalone. Let's take a closer look at AppStream 2 before diving deep into workspaces. With Amazon AppStream 2, you can enable your users to run your .NET applications in the cloud without any modifications and stream it to any device, all while centrally managing applications. Streaming your application simplifies application delivery by providing access to your application without the need to install them on the device and provides access to resources the device may lack, for example, internal resources like network storage, file shares, or AWS services. You can share an optimized image with your customers to deliver trials, demos, and training to create a software as a service experience for your desktop applications without needing to purchase, manage, and upgrade workstations. With AppStream 2, Applications run inside your own virtual private cloud, enabling you to isolate your applications and deliver them in a secure way. There are four major steps to deploy your application using AppStream 2. The first is to use the image builder via the AWS Management Console, which will create an instance we can use to install, test, and publish the application image. The image assistant guides us through the image creation process. During this phase, we also optimize the app launch time and configure the application's launch parameters and default settings. With those steps completed, the image is published to an image registry, which is used to define the fleet. When creating the fleet, we configure the items that affect the EC2 instances that will be provisioned, such as scaling policies, where the instances run all the time or only when users are streaming applications, the instance type that will be used, and VPC setup. Once the fleet is configured, the last step is to create a stack. A stack consists of an associated fleet, user access policies, and storage configurations. You can configure items such as clipboard and file transfer access, whether persistent storage will be available to users, and apply custom branding. Let's see these steps in action. To launch Image Builder, we need to go to the AppStream Management Console. We'll go to Images, select the Image Builder tab, and click Launch the Image Builder. To launch an Image Builder instance, we need to select an image first. 
We'll select the Microsoft Windows Server 2019 base and click Next. We'll name the image builder and select a medium size instance type. If we select default internet access, the image builder instance is assigned a public IP address and must be in a public subnet. With it unselected, the instance is assigned a private IP address and uses a NAT gateway for internet access. I'll select a VPC and a private subnet with internet access to launch the instance into. We'll review the settings and launch. We'll wait for the image builder status to switch from pending to running. Once it is ready, we can connect. This will launch the image builder in the browser. We'll log on as administrator so that we can install our application. This can be bin deployed or installed via an installer. I will bin deploy the WPF Expensit application. With the application installed, we have to add it to the application catalog to make it available to users. I'll navigate to where I deploy the Expensit application and provide a name and launch settings such as the working directory. Now that the application is added to the catalog, if we had to create default application or window settings, we would switch to the template user. I don't have any, so I'll just save the settings and go back to the image builder and switch users to test the application. We'll switch to the test user to do that. The idea here is to test with an account with the same permissions as your users. Once we verify the application is working, we'll switch back to the administrator user. We optimize the application to reduce its launch time. We launch the application, and once it's launched, we click Continue. With optimization complete, we provide the image information. We recommend that you leave the Always Use Latest Agent Version option selected so that streaming instances that are launched from the image always use the latest version of the agent. If you disable this option, you cannot enable it after you finish creating the image. We'll click Next, and then disconnect and create the image. We'll wait for the image builder status to change to Stopped. Now we can see our custom image available in the image registry. Next, we'll create the fleet, provide the name, and click Next. We'll select our custom image, specify the instance type, whether the fleet is on demand or always on, we can also change session details, fleet capacity, and auto scaling policy. Next, we'll configure networking information. We recommend that you choose two subnets in different availability zones. You can also select up to five security groups. Active Directory domain join is optional, and we'll skip this for our example. We'll review the fleet settings, click Create, and acknowledge the pricing details dialog. We'll wait for the fleet to reach the running state. Then move on to creating the stack. We'll provide the names and select the fleet we just created and click Next. You can enable storage for users, including access to home drives and access to Google Drive and OneDrive. Next, we'll specify access to the clipboard, file transfers, and printers as well as whether to enable application settings persistence. We'll click Review, verify our settings, and click Create. With the stack created, the last piece is to grant access to users. I'll create a sample user and assign him to the stack created earlier. The user will get an email invitation with login information. I'll enter the username and password once logged in, you can see the expensive application available to stream. And it's working as if it was being run on the user's desktop. Now that we've seen how seamless it is to provide an application streaming experience, let's take a look at how to provide a full persistent desktop experience using workspaces. Instead of spending weeks or months purchasing, building, and securing virtual desktop infrastructure and devices for contractors, remote employees, specialized applications or mergers and acquisitions, you simply deliver what they need on demand to deliver on the promise of bring your own device. 
You can also streamline test and development processes by quickly onboarding new users and allow access to content and applications from the project site, wherever that is. And since data is streamed to your device in an encrypted format and not stored locally, Amazon Workspaces helps improve your security posture. There are four major steps to deploy your application using Workspaces. The first of which is to launch a workspace that you will use as a starting point to customize by installing the application. With the application installed and configured, the next step is to create an image from that workspace. It is a best practice to run the image checker during this step to test the workspace and validate that it is ready to be used to create an image. Once the image is created, we can create a bundle where we configure the hardware to use and the instance volume size. Finally, we launched a workspace where we identified the users that will have access and settings such as the running mode and whether the instances run all the time or are started automatically when users log in and stop when no longer in use. Let's see these steps in action. We'll start with going to the workspaces management console. If this is the first time you visited this console, you'll be greeted with the welcome screen. We'll launch the advanced setup but since I already have a directory set up, I will cancel out of creating a new one. With the directory created, the first step is to register it with Amazon Workspaces. We'll select two subnets that are not in the same availability zone and disable self-service permissions so that users are not able to rebuild their workspaces, change the volume size, compute type, or running mode. The directory status will change the registering. We'll wait for registration to complete and now you see that the registered value is set to yes. Next, we'll launch the workspace so that we can customize it by installing our application. We can then create a custom image from it. We'll select the directory we just registered. We'll add a sample user and click Next. I'll use the standard with Windows 10 bundle and click Next. I'll specify whether the running mode is always on or auto stops when the workspace is not in use. We'll review the settings and launch the workspace. When the workspace is ready, the user is sent an email with the registration code and information on downloading the client. I'm using the macOS client to log on to the newly created workspace. Now it's time to customize the workspace by installing our application. I use the same application as before and bin deploy it. I'll run the application to verify it is working as expected and add a shortcut to the desktop. Next, I'll run the image checker tool to confirm that the Windows workspace meets the requirements for image creation. The image checker performs a series of tests on the workspace that you want to use to create your image and provides guidance on how to resolve any issues it finds. With that step complete, I can disconnect and create the custom image. The first step is restarting the workspace to make sure it has the necessary updates. We're now ready to create the new image. Because we've already rebooted the workspace, we can click Next and provide an image name. We'll switch to the Images page and wait for the image status to be available. With the custom image creation process complete, it's time to create the bundle. We'll provide the name, description, the bundle type, and volume sizes. Now that we have a custom bundle, we can launch a new workspace from it and verify that our application is working as expected. The steps are the same as before. We'll select our directory and create a sample user. This time, however, we'll select our custom bundle. We'll set the running mode, review our settings, and then launch the workspace. Once the workspace becomes available, we can connect to it using the Workspaces client application and launch our custom application. That's all it takes to provide a persistent desktop experience with our custom application pre-installed. In this video, we saw how to use both Amazon Workspaces and Amazon AppStream 2 to host your .NET desktop applications. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Thank you for watching.